I can say almost certainly that there's going to be a question where you're asked to do the complete combustion of some form of alkane, alkene, or alcohol. There's a pretty simple way of working out the equations if you don't already know them. Um, we'll take um, octane for this example, which is C8H18 plus O2. Now the way I do this is I leave a gap here so I know I can do any balancing that needs to be done. And uh, on the other side of the arrow, we have as many carbon dioxide atoms uh, molecules as there are carbon ad atoms in our hydrocarbon. So this would be eight CO2, and then we'd have half as many half as many H2Os as there are hydrogens in our hydrocarbon. So in this case, it'd be nine H2O. Now the way we work out how many oxygens we need is we just count up the number of oxygens on this side. So on this side there'd be 25, 25 oxygens. We divide that by 2 because the oxygen is diatomic. We've got 8 in here, 9 in here. 8 times 2, that's 16. Yep, 25 divided by 2 and that equals 12, 12 and a half. If my thing right. and then we have a balanced equation for the complete the complete combustion of an alkane. Equally, you might be asked to do the incomplete combustion of an alkane, or alcohol, or alkene, or any other thing. Um, the way we work this one out is that the only difference is that there's carbon monoxide produced. So we'll take um, octane as our example, so that's C8H18 H plus O2, and we get as many carbon monoxides, carbon monoxides, as there are carbons, so that would be 8CO and half as many water molecules as we have hydrogens in the side, so again it's been 9 H H2O and again we add up the number of the oxygens on the side, so in this case it would be 17 divided by 2 to get how many oxygen atoms we need and so we get Seven. Is it seven point five? No, it's eight point five. So we need eight and a half O twos, and that's our balanced equation for the incomplete combustion of octane. Other equations we know are the oxidation of alcohols. Um, this can be done with a suitable oxidizing agent, which is a solution containing acidified dichromate ions, um, which can be shown, which is usually like a mixture of sulfuric acid and potassium dichromate. That's generally the oxidizing agent we use for this. During this reaction, the acidified potassium dichromate changes colour from orange to green. So on primary alcohols, which is where the where the it's where the OH the carbon with the OH group is only attached to one R group. So this would be a primary alcohol down here. COH and this would be a H up here. If H just work properly. It's a H H down here and there's our hydrocarbon chain. This would be a primary alcohol. If it was attached to two R groups, it would be a secondary alcohol, so it would be an R group up here. 
And finally, if it was attached to three R groups, it'd be a tertiary alcohol. That's not an R, that's a beta sign. So that would be a, a tertiary alcohol. Three R groups. It's really easy to remember. One, one R primary, one R group, secondary, two R groups, tertiary, three R groups. Um, now the equation for the oxidation of a primary alcohol. Um, a primary alcohol falls, forms an aldehyde. Um, we'll do the oxidation of propan 1 which is a primary alcohol. So this has three carbons, OH group, OH group, bonds in between here, and I'll not bother drawing the hydrogens. And we represent the oxidizing agent as an O in square brackets. Now with oxidization, you don't need to do any balancing. On the arrow for... well, you don't need to do balancing because it's already balanced. On the arrow, we draw... we write... We write our oxidizing mixture, which is K2Cr... If the C stays, CR two O seven slash if H's work H two if the R two S O four and this reacts to form propanol, which has the I'll draw it down here because I don't have room. That has the structure C C. I imagine all of these C's have hydrogens attached. I can't bother to draw them. Really. And double bond O up here, going down, and a hydrogen here. And this also forms H two O. I should also mention that this is done under distillation. After this reaction is taking place, you distill it immediately and then you produce the propanol. However, if you don't distill it and instead you reflux it, you can produce a carboxylic acid. Now the way this, this works is that carboxylic acid is produced. It's more or less the same equation except you need to do some balancing because if you notice here, there's an extra oxygen. So to deal with this, you put an, a two in front of your oxidized agent, and then this is how you form propanolic acid. There's hydrogens on this again, like it was in the aldehyde. Um, uh, while I'm here, and I'm always going to be here, but whatever. Um, I'll write out the functional group, the general formula for an um, aldehyde and. Um, and a carboxylic acid. It would be R for an aldehyde. R C O H. Or for a carboxylic acid, it's R C O O H. Secondary alcohols, when oxidized, form ketones. Um, so let's take uh, the secondary alcohol. We'll do propan two all. So this has the structural formula C C C, and then the OH is here. The OH is here, and just imagine all of these carbons have hydrogens attached. So this is propan tool um, plus our oxygen oxidizing agent. And this goes with the same things on the arrow, the K, K2Cr2O7 slash H2SO4, but I'm not going to bother writing it. And this is done over heat, not reflux or distillation. Um, and this forms butanone and H2O. 
Deep Known's a ketone, um, and this has the structure C, C, B, C, C, O, C, C, O, C, and B, the B hydrogens attached here, plus the H2O, which has been liberated from here, and this other hydrogen here. Um, now, as I did with the aldehydes and the and the carboxylic acid, I'll write out the structure for it. The general formula: it's R C O R, where R is a hydrocarbon chain. Um, and before I finish, tertiary alcohols do not oxidize; they are resistant to oxidization. Which means that oxidization, oxidizing agent remains orange in colour after the reaction is taking place. Oh, no reaction is taking place.